start by talking about how we know two lines are either, uh, let's talk about parallel perpendicular and then equal lines and then, and then the above. So how about for parallel lines, how do we know two lines are parallel? If we look at them, they don't under intersect, okay? But we can't, I mean, let's say I draw this picture. Are those two lines parallel? Yeah. They're not even lines. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Am I that good at drawing? No. No, even if I were, the screen is made of pixels and, you see what I'm saying? A graph is not a, a good way. Well, that's not a perfect way to tell if lines are perpendicular or parallel. They look like it. Like I certainly would think it's worth further investigation to see if these lines are parallel, but to know for sure if they're parallel, we can't just look at the graphs. Right? We have to look deeper. We have to look at something that's quantifiable, meaning that we can put a number to it. So what do we know about two lines that makes them absolutely definitely parallel? Look at these two lines that look as if they're parallel. Right. They're parallel because they're not going to intersect. If supposedly they're, they're parallel. Okay. Um, for lines, we, we could kind of look at a line as having at least two <coughs> attributes that are, are uh, <coughs> common among, or let's see, they're attributes we look at, uh, look for in, in all lines. We got a y intercept and we have a slope. Of those two, I mean, let's compare their y-intercepts. Are they same, different? Uh, yeah, they're different. The y-intercept, that's where it crosses the y-axis there. And it's definitely <coughs> different. Okay. Is that, you think that's useful information when we think about if they're parallel? Do you think it matters what their y-intercepts are? It does matter. Is it? Is it something about their y-intercepts? And is it like if I take one y-intercept minus the other intercept, that tells me if they're parallel? Probably not. But what is it about these lines? They're parallel, right? They got it. It seems like they would have to have something that's the same about them, right? Oh, they have the same slope. They do have the same slope, right? That's what he talked about in the videos. He covered that the two two parallel lines. If you don't know if they're parallel, you would find out if they have the same slope. Okay, so parallel lines, same slope. Okay. Perpendicular lines, they don't have the same slope, right? They, they intersect at a 90 degree angle. So what about perpendicular lines? How do we tell the two lines are perpendicular? It's by their slopes. Think about like if this line is positive, has a positive slope, right? Goes up and to the right, then the line is perpendicular to that would have to come down and to the right in order to intersect it at a 90 degree angle. It's got to come in the opposite kind of direction. This is a positive slope, this is a negative slope. So the only way we could get it to be perpendicular is if it had a negative slope. So yes, opposite, but not quite just opposite. I just slap a negative on there and you're good to go. It's also Reciprocal, the opposite reciprocal. If two lines are perpendicular, let's say that one has a slope of three fourths, and there's this other line that's perpendicular. Okay, it's another perpendicular line. So if there's a line that's perpendicular to a line that has a slope of three fourths, what slope does this perpendicular line have? It's negative four thirds. Exactly, negative four thirds. 
So a quick little break there, a reminder of <coughs> if you have two parallel lines. If you didn't know that, if you didn't know that parallel lines had the same slope, and you didn't know that perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes, maybe you need to, if you're not watching the videos, you to watch the videos. Maybe you're watching the videos, but you're skipping over key parts. Okay? This is definitely, definitely, definitely covered many times over. The idea that per parallel lines have the same slope and perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes. Or maybe we're just being shy and that's too, but this is the expectation that you're, you're going to know this, right? And if you're not, you can call me over, go over it, we'll figure it out together. Okay. So, if they're parallel, they have the same slope. So if I want to know if these are parallel lines, I need to know if they have the same slope. Or if they're perpendicular lines, I need to know if they have the opposite reciprocal slope. Or if they don't have either one of those, then they're not parallel or perpendicular. Okay. So, let's figure that out. Same slope or not. I don't really figure out the slope of this line. Like when you use the formula f equals mx plus p? f of x equals mx plus p or y equals mx plus b? How do you mean use that? Uh, Slope in. Okay, like I don't know what's going on. So we're just going to have to like subtract and add it until it looks like. Yeah. Get it to look like y equals mx plus b. Yeah. So let's convert this over to this form, the slope intercept form, right? So that we have the slope right there. Once it's like that, y equals mx plus b, and we'll be. Is the slope in this form? Uh, no, it is not. The slope will be this guy right here that is multiplied by x. So we'll take 2x minus y. Maybe you probably can't see that that well. So 2x two, two minus y equals 4. And we want to get it to look like this. But pretty plainly, we just need to get y by itself. We get y by itself and positive, and then we'll have it in slope intercept. Pretty much. All right. So how are we going to get this in the slope intercept form? Um, plus y on both sides. Plus y on both sides. Okay. Two x equals four plus y. And then subtract four. Subtract four. So I'm just going to this guy over here. Y equals two x minus four. Like on one side of the equation we have y, on the other we have two x minus four. So what's the slope of this line? So if this other line is parallel, then it will have a slope of what? But if it's perpendicular, I have a slope of? Negative one over two. We have to give it negative, and we have to flip it over. OK, so uh, let's grab another color and start with 2x plus 4y equals 5. OK, I'm going to get y by itself. Um, you put in a zero on the x. Well, if I put a zero on the x, what will I be doing? What am I doing when I do this? Oh, oh yeah. Solving for y, this would be called the. I'm gonna find a really special point. So solving for the y. y. Yeah, you would get the point zero yeah. comma whatever y is yeah. the y intercept. Okay, so that's a good thing to know about. But what we're trying to do is figure out what the slope is. We're going to do the same thing for this one. Would you do minus 4 on both sides to get 1 by itself? Well, okay, let's, look at, let's look at 4. So 4y, four you're saying subtract 4 to cancel out this 4? Yeah. But this is 4 of what y? Times y. Same so if I, if I did want to cancel out that 4, I wouldn't want to divide by 4, not subtract 4. OK? So and whatever that number is right there next to the y, we're going to divide by something to get rid of that. I would save that. To like the last step. That's my that's my advice. Okay. So 
So three minus four y on both sides. Okay, we can do that. Two x equals negative four y plus five. Subtract five. Two x minus five. Subtracting five from both sides equals negative four y. Five by four. By four. How about by negative four? We gotta divide both of these things by by negative four. What's two divided by negative four? Negative two. Not quite. Not quite. Two divided by four. Two divided by four. Twenty-five. Is it negative four? It is. So negative one half. Four point five. It's definitely easier to use a slope that's in the fraction form. Negative one half x, and then what's negative five divided by negative four? Here, leave it as a fraction. Four. Five over four. Five. Okay, you got it. Five over four plus five over four, so it's positive five over four equals y. Okay. So, what's the slope of this line? Are they parallel? No. No, they don't have the same slope. Are they perpendicular? Yes. Yes, they are. They have opposite reciprocal slopes. This is a positive 2. This is a negative 1 over 2. They are perpendicular lines. So I have the equation of two lines. I want to know if they're parallel or perpendicular. I need to get them into slope-intercept form or somehow find a slope. Uh, and if they have the same slope of parallel, if they have opposite reciprocal slopes, they're perpendicular. So, that same kind of question right there. Exactly the same kind of question. Here's 3x plus 2y. I'm going to figure out what their slopes are. Do they have the same slope? Do they have opposite reciprocal slopes? So, generally you're trying to get it into slope intercept form, right? Which means we're trying to get y by itself. Can. I don't know that I would, but you could. I just if you do that, I think you'll have like a couple extra steps. What else could we do though? Instead of subtract two y, subtract what? Two. No, no, that doesn't really do much. Is there something else on that side you could subtract? It's kind of like two y. Uh, subtract 3x. Subtract 3x. Subtract 3x. The only reason I would do that rather than the, than the y is because it leaves it so that the y term is positive. If we subtract it on the other side, it would be negative 2y. And when we do this, I mean, it's, it's just one step away from being all by itself already. 3x minus 1. Almost there. Now what? We're going to divide by 2, we're going to divide this by 2, that's negative 3 over 2, x. Okay, divide this by 2, we get negative 1 half. All right, so the slope is negative 3 halves, you can see that right there. Negative 3x minus 2y equals 1. I get y by itself again. Aiden? Oh, no, I was going to stretch, but... <coughs> Plus 3x trying to get 
plus 3x on both sides, so they cancel out the 3x, you get negative 2y equals 3x plus 1. Yeah. They need to divide by negative 2. Good, right in there. y equals, okay, so 3 divided by negative 2, that's negative 3 divided by 2. Uh, 1 divided by negative 2, negative 1 half. Okay, so are they parallel? No. Why don't you why don't you do a parallel? Because they're like one half and they're the same. They're exactly the same line. Not only do they have the same slope, which is what we usually look for to see if they're parallel, they also have the same what's that? They'd be like two lines that are on top of each other. Yeah. They'd be two lines right on top of each other. What's this thing called? Can we put a graph it? This is the R N S right. B of Rise and run. Eyes. Nope. Okay. Um, I equals, let's make up an equation here. Plus uh, 2. So y equals 3 fourths x plus 2. A lot of guessing and hoping that I get it right and, and wishing I didn't have to be here doing this. Right. So, Let's again, let's deconstruct exactly why we even care to write it in this form so often. Okay, let's start with the table of values. Now let's plug in things for x that make it really easy to solve for y. Easiest thing to plug in for x would be zero. What do we get when we plug in zero? You get two. Zero times three-fourths is zero plus two is just two. Right, let's take a look at a bunch of other equations that I'm about to make up. y equals negative 4 sevenths x minus 3. y equals negative 4 fifths x plus 7. y equals 5 ninths x minus 6. y equals 107 over 1264x plus 1. If I plug zero in for x in this equation, what will I get out? Okay, now when I go to graph that, I plug in zero for x, I get out negative three for y. Where will that go? What's up? It'll go on the y-axis. Right there, zero for x, right? You won't go anywhere horizontally. It's all vertical, just go y is negative three. Okay, if I plug in zero for x in this one, what will I get out for y? Seven. That's just that guy right there, right? That's why I was saying, what is this? That's pretty important. When we plug in zero, we'll always get this number. That's going to go on the y-axis as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There it is. There's this guy here. We plug in zero for x. What we get for y? Negative six. There's a point at one, two, three, four, five, six on the y-axis. Negative six on the y-axis. How about this one? Even though this is a crazy fraction, if I plug in zero for x, what do I get for y? One. One. So I at least know one point on that graph. Right? So this is what? The y-intercept. What does that mean? It means the point on the y-axis. The point from this line that's on the y-axis. We can always just take the, let's say, that's oh, that's the y-intercept because this other thing has an x in it. If I plug in zero for x, meaning that I am not to the right and I'm not to the left of the y-axis, then I just get that number for the y-value. So that's my y-intercept. Anytime I'm graphing this, anytime it's written in slope-intercept form, that number that's just hanging out by itself and is not multiplied by x is our y-intercept. So we plug zero in for x, we get two for y. Any, any time. So no, it is not the rise over the left. It's not the slope. It is not any of those things. It is what you get out for y when you plug in 0 for x, otherwise known as the y-intercept. There it is again, the y-intercept. The whole thing. OK. Now, we talk a bunch about the slope, and yet we understand it so little. What is the number you'd want to plug in for x in this equation? That would make it very, very easy to figure out y. Or very easy. Plug in four for x. Why do you do that? Multiple of two. Why is this multiple of two? Multiple of four. Four. 
right? We want multiples of four because we're dividing by four. Yeah. If you'd like a multiple of four to be divided by four, it'll divide by four evenly, and then we'll have no more fractions. Very easy to deal with. Can I plug in one for x? Yeah. Two? Yeah. Three? Yeah. Uh, 3.7. Yeah. 2.49. Yeah. Yes. I can plug in all those things. But they are all a hassle. Now they're valid and we need to include them as like theoretical inputs. Right? That's kind of what a graph is, like theoretically. If you plug this in for x, even though you might not ever do that, this is what you get out for y. But we want to plug in 4 because when we plug in 4, we get 3 fourths times 4. I like to put 4 over 1 so that I know exactly what's supposed to be going on here. Plus 2. Okay. So I plug in 4, the 4 divided by 4 is 1. That leaves 3 over 1. That's just 3 plus 2. Gives me 5. Go over to x is 4. When I said over, that should sound familiar. Over 4. That's the run slope. Okay. We're going over 4. When we say up and over, that's what I'm talking about. Over 4. Why over 4? Because the denominator is 4. Because if I put in a multiple of 4, I'll cancel out that denominator of 4. So go over 4, and my y value is 5. Right, right from here, 4 comma 5. 4 comma 5. Or from this point, we just went over 4 and up. <coughs> Over 4 and up 3. What if we wanted to plug in another easy number for x? What would it be? 8. Eight. The next multiple of 4. <laughs> 3 fourths times 8 over 1. 8 divided by 4 is 2. 2 times 3 is 6. So 2 times 3 is 6. 6 plus 2 is 8. Well, eight. Well, this is at this is at y is five. That's only one, two, three more. Three greater than, three greater than five. So we go over four more to a, a total of x is eight. Then we go up, up to eight, which is only three higher than five. And so I notice, hey, every time I go to the next multiple of four, I only go up three more from the previous previous point. If we go over another four. Where am I now? Where is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> be the next multiple of four, right? I, I don't want to go over in chunks of four. I do not want to go over one. So if I go over one, I've got this fourths, and I've got to add fourths, and I've got to get common denominators, and then I have to graph that. I've got to graph fourths, and that would be a hassle. Not that it's not possible, it's just a hassle. I notice this pattern. I go over four, one, two, three, four from this point, and I'll just go up three more. Up three more from there. And I say to myself, I could do this forever. I can go up, up three and over four, over four, up three, forever and ever and ever. In fact, I can go in the other direction. I can go to negative multiples of four, go to the left four. And I'll just go down one, two, three. Because if I go from here, I go over four, up three, it follows the pattern. Okay. Go over four, up three, left four, down three, it all makes the same thing. And then, what am I drawing right now? A line. A line. Made of points. How many points? Millions, millions, trillions, trillions. Yes, exactly. I'm drawing an infinite number of points. Now I'm catching all of those points that I would have gotten if I plugged in 1, if I plugged in 2, if I plugged in 3, 3.7, 4.5, whatever. Like I'm catching all of those points as well because I'm just noticing that there's this pattern. They, they just add this up 3 over 4, up 3 over 4, up 3 over 4. So all the other points must just happen to be in a straight line from one point to another, and that's, that's true. So, this is our y-intercept. That, over there, that's our slope. Okay. Are you
you always want to graph this way, plugging in things for x that are multiples of the denominator is probably going to do the y-intercept and the slope. But if I ever catch you not understanding it, we're just going to go through this again. Yeah. So that's going to happen. All right, so now we come back to these two equations. y equals negative 3 halves x uh, minus 1 half, and y equals negative 3 halves x minus 1 half. They have the same slope, and they have the same y-intercept. If two lines have the same y-intercept, OK, I go down one, negative 1 half on the, on the y-axis, and then I just follow the same slope. If I graph two lines, one in a row, they're just going to be one line on top of another. go down to negative 1 half, that's our y-intercept, and we go the slope of negative 3 over 2, so one of these things has to be negative. So I'll go uh, up 3, let's see, that's going to land on halves, 1, 2, 3, and to the left, 2, because one of these things needs to be negative, so we go over 2 from there. All right, I just graph the red line. If I were to do it for the blue line, I would just wind up doing the exact same thing. And then negative 1 half, up 3, over 2, and drawing the blue line. It's right on top of each other. So what's our answer? Equal They're equal lines. Equal lines to each other. They're not parallel. Right? Parallel lines never intersect, right? How many times do these lines intersect? Twice. Infinity. They intersect anywhere you see one line, the other line is intersecting it. They're right on top of each other. Okay. Now, you can find the slope and the y-intercept of a line that's parallel to that line there. You can see this line is graphed here in blue passes through the point negative 8, 4. So there's a point that a line's going to go through. This line's going to be parallel to that line there. Okay. So if this line's going that, that, that we may draw here in a minute, if it's parallel, then what's its slope going to be? What's that? Yeah, they're parallel. they got to have the same slope, right? What is the slope of the blue line? Slope. Uh, you may want to look up at the board, maybe, at the equation you're pointing at. What's that? Yes. You said x, but then you didn't say x. It's like changing my answer. Very good. Yes, it's not negative 1 half x. That is not the slope. The slope is negative 1 half. So the slope of this thing that's going to go through the red point is going to have a slope of what? It's going to be the same. Negative 1 half. Negative one half is what I put in there. Yeah. What's the B? Unknown. Unknown. But here's the thing. We're trying to figure out the B. What is the B in this? I mean, this is B, right? Yeah. yeah. Four. Is the what do we call that B? Y-intercept. Yes, the y-intercept. Exactly. <laughs> so we're trying to figure out what the y-intercept is. If we had like an equation for the, let's say, let's make it red because it's a red point. Okay, we're going to write y equals mx plus b. So a line that goes to that red point, we're writing in red here, y equals mx plus b. Okay. Do we know anything about this equation? Mm -hmm. Oh, m to the negative one half. m is negative one half, exactly. And b is four. Oh. Now b is four for this line. Oh, yeah. that line, okay. Not for this line, yes. Um, the Oh, and we know x and x is negative 8, and an x, or sorry, a y is 4. There are infinite numbers of x's and y's that will work in this equation, right? That's for this, this function, that's what functions tend to do, is have infinite numbers of inputs and outputs. Right. But one specific input and output is given, negative 8, 4. So let's see what happens when we plug all this stuff in there. 4, help me out, uh, negative... 1 half times negative 8, I like to put it over 1 plus b. Look at that, it's an equation with one thing that we don't know. Whenever that happens, we can usually solve for that thing. Four equals, so <laughs> negative times negative is positive, so this number's going to be positive. It's uh, 8, right, 8 times 1, 
over 2. What's 8 over 2? Of course. So that number's 4. Over here we have 4. So what's B? Yeah, when you subtract 4 on both sides, you find that B is 0. Now, can we write this equation in this line here? Yes. Yeah, so yeah, it'd be y equals what? Negative, negative one half, because you just hold the set, that m is negative one half, and b is? Zero. We don't have to write plus zero, that's kind of silly. But we do want to tell what the y-intercept is. What is the y-intercept of this line? Zero. 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 So you write the equation now, and when it, well, the slope is easy, because it's given. Parallel to that of the line. And then we can use the slope intercept form to find the slope intercept. And we can answer that question. Is it the same kind of problem? Yeah. Just in every detail. It's perpendicular instead of parallel. So now we're still in red. Uh, our equation y equals mx plus b. It's very, very similar, right? We know an x, we know a y. We know the slope. Can you tell me what the slope of this line is? Three. It's positive three. This slope is negative one third. So the perpendicular line's slope will be the opposite of that, which is, this is negative, so it'll be positive. Be the reciprocal, this is 1 over 3, so the reciprocal will be 3 over 1. So positive 3 is the slope. How did you do that? You saw what we did in the previous problem. Good try. Alright, so we know that the slope is 3. We also know that if I plug in what for x? Negative 4 for x, what will I get for y? Negative 3, Negative three for y. So I know an input and an output for this equation. The only thing I don't know at this point is b. But if negative 3 is y, and the slope is 3, and if x is negative 4, then I can use all that to solve for b. Right, 3 times negative 4. Negative 12. How do I get b by itself? Plus 12. Plus 12 on both sides. So 9 equals b. Now I have it all. I have all the information that I need to write this equation. Really, I don't need to write this equation, but I will. But right, I have all the pieces that I need to answer these questions. I have the equation y equals 3x plus 9. There's my slope that was given. Like, how did I know that the slope is 3 for this line? Opposite reciprocal of negative 1 third because it's perpendicular to that line. Um, and how do I know that b is 9? Because we just did all that work to find that b is 9. So, m is 3, b is 9. There we go. All you have to do is plug all that information into like a, an equation that's just you know blank. It's like a template. You know what a template is? It's like a fill in the blank. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a, a, an example of how like a letter should look or, or how a, a picture. painting a picture or anything. You really a template could apply to anything. But uh, it's like fill in the blank. It's, it's just got this this ready to be filled in. Equation for a line. No slope, no an x, no a y. Plug it all in. Any questions before I check on the status of computers for us? Yeah. Okay, so if we like didn't do well on the worksheet because we didn't understand this, uh -huh. could we like redo it? Um, could we like redo it now? Because that would be on the exam. Sure, scratch it out, do it again. Had another one because I don't have a bunch of copies. I don't know where it is today, so I don't know where my copies are. So you can print it in. You print it out, turn it in later. Any other questions?
If you don't, uh, if you didn't do well at these on the academy question, make sure you go back and do well on them. Because some of the requirements for the homework is that you get a certain number correct, a certain number correct in a row. Right, so go back and make sure that those get handled. Uh, so we're going to be writing equations of lines, which we have done some of. We need some more practice, so we're going to be doing that some more today. So let me go and check. Uh, 